Thank you. Thank you, Laura. Laura's so official. I feel like our plane is about to take off and <laughs> she was pointing in the direction of the exit signs and everything like that. So um, no, but that's, uh, this is great. Uh, as Laura said, my name's Scott Marcus and I'm here with my law partner, Alana Polishuk. Um, and we have a very special guest today, Jason Smith from Keller Williams. Uh, Jason is a dear friend and uh, really he and I have known each other for over 35 years. He's a broker associate with Keller Williams. Um, he's branded the name Showcase. Uh, he's some of his, his hobbies, passionate about cycling, traveling, public speaking, investing, and over 20 years experience in, in uh, real estate sales. Uh, within that time, I believe Jason has uh, sold over 600 properties of all price ranges. He's, he's become a real expert in the Miami real estate market. Um, and he's, he, he's a real expert in, in listings, especially getting listings and converting a phone call to an appointment, to a listing, and we'll go into that. Um, he's also the area governor of, uh, of the year for Toastmasters. So if anybody ever has had some degree of stage fright, and we all have, public speaking, Toastmasters is a, is a very, very nice forum to help develop a lot of skills, just regular life skills and interacting with people. Um, so he's, uh, Jason's ranked among the top three agents in the office, in his office in dollar volume sold from 2006 to present. And he was number two out of 7,000 Keller Williams agents in the region in volume sold in August of 2020 with uh, 4.4 million closed in that month. Wow. Um, Jason, welcome. Thank you, Scott. Thank you very much. Pleasure to be here. Thank you, Alana, Laura. It's great to be here. Wonderful. Um, all right. So usually what we do here is, is I, I go down a little bit of a list of topics that I feel are important. And Jason, you could jump in um, at any point in time, stop me, derail, change, change tack, whatever, whatever suits you. But um, what, what our focus is, is on listings today. And I wanna know why is it that you like to focus on the listing side of the process? Great question, great question. Well, when I first got into this business, uh, it was 2020, it was my New Year's resolution, January 1st, sorry, 2001, 2001, January 1st. I went cold turkey from my previous job, which was selling the five gallon Zephyr Hills bottles. I remember uh, that home and office, a lot of cold calling or setting up at a Bally's gym and signing up people for the dollar, the delivery cost you a dollar a day and you can get all this water delivered. And I learned before that I was working at a doing toner cartridges for the HP laser printers and going calling on law firms such as yours, you know, would you like to take our toner? It's a, you can pay 200 at Office Depot or you can pay $70 for this one recycled. Um, and I learned that the, law, that the more in sales, that was my discovery of sales, office supplies, that the more you sell, the more you make, you know, the smarter you work, you know, the harder you work, You're, there's no ceiling on your income. So I said, okay, you, you get contracts signed. And then I saw, I just to tell you how I got into real estate. So basically one of the places for the Zephyr Hills was the five gallon, I'd set up at a baby's R Us, which I don't think they have that any longer on a Saturday, where okay. at a Home Depot, on Saturday from 10 to two, which is our peak hours of all, the whole week is 10 to two Saturday. I'd give a free sample of water and you sign up a bunch of people like that. But the biggest objection I was getting was, oh, sorry, we're about to move. We're about to move. We're, you know, these people were about to move. Like, man, these real estate agents must be making a lot of money. All these people are moving. Somebody's handling that transaction. So I got my real estate license and then I became a Coldwell Banker agent at that time. But at no point was I thinking I'm going to help these, I'm going to help buyers. I said no. The skill set that I have is getting rejected a lot, talking to a lot of people, and knowing that one out of twenty of these people, if I ask for the seller listing, that they're going to sign a listing agreement with me, which to me is a different skill set than working with a buyer and showing them properties. Like a lot of agents get in the business because they like people and they like houses, they like real estate. 
that wasn't the reason that I got in the business. The reason I got in the business is I'm able to talk to a lot of people and get 19 no's and one yes, and just do that over and over and over. At no That's point you heard me say that I love real estate. It's not in that answer. That's Jason, why listings is that way. Yeah, no, no. I, I sincerely, and I'm sure our audience does as well, appreciate that kind of candor because you put a different spin on your your job to where you're you understand that you're going to get the nose you're looking for the nose because after x number of nos will come a yes and that's what you're bargaining for mm -hmm. and and i like that because it's a, it's a whole different outlook on you know i've got to get into this because i like this aspect i like different homes and architecture and for you it's it's almost mathematical you know, you have a, you have a very finite process and I've, I've known you for a long time. I know how you think. And, um, you know, it's, it's, it's a formula. So that's, that's just fantastic. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, by the same token, because I view it that way, it doesn't make me the best buyer's agent. I'll be the first to admit it. Right. Cause you've got to have a bit more empathy and oh, really love the real estate, which I do trust me, of course, right. But you really got to have more patience in uh, on the buyer agent role, I believe, than if you're doing the listing agent waiting for that one to sign with you. So there are different skill sets within the real estate game. I think the key is to figure out what you're best at and kind of find your niche, which for me has been listings. Uh, that, that's as terrific. Buyer. So along those lines, Jace, where, you know, if if I'm I'm out there and I'm listening to this this presentation. Um, I know that a lot of the brokers who run the various offices will, you know, have certain leads or teach their people their methodology, but where do you find your leads? How do you know who to contact? And, um, you know, how do you leverage leads into listings? <clears throat> great question. So there's different, the way that I've done it for many years is for sale by owner and expired because they're already raising their hands saying that they want to sell. So you know they, they want to sell. <clears throat> so calling them, but you can hear a lot of no's doing that. And there's lists that you can get that have the for sale by owners and the expired list every day that you know, there's, there's Red X is one of them. Land Voice is another that you can subscribe to. So, and then you calling them, the key is to call them the same time every day, put it in your schedule because if it's not in your schedule, it doesn't exist. So you can build your day around it. For me, it's from about 8 a.m. to say 10 a.m. And then in the and then you work hard to lead generate. That's your the accelerator for your business, getting appointments in the morning. And then the afternoon takes care of itself with whatever appointments you generated that morning. Mm. So that's yeah. that's but you that's don't want so, to expect, yeah. Yeah, no, I you know, back in the day when I joined Becker and Polyakov it was probably around 2005. I think you were in real estate at that time. And I remember there were times where I was trying to reach you. We were working on a deal together and I was trying to reach you, let's say at 930 in the morning, mm -hmm. impossible. All right. And, and it used to frustrate me until, until I realized what you were doing and what you were doing is you had blocked off time mm -hmm. every day at the same time to do the same thing. Is that correct? Absolutely correct. Okay. And that scheduling turned you into one of the most prolific listing agents, you know, in South Florida, because you're, it, it's just, you're dogged about it. You put it in the calendar. That is your time. Nothing gets in the way of that time. Absolutely. Because I, I, thank you for saying that compliment, by the way. I mean, I think I've got a long way to go, but I think at the, as far as being prolific, you know, we, we can always get better at our craft, right? So there's so much we can do to improve and I want to continue. Um, they're the top 20% of a listing agent, speaking to what you're saying, that you've got to have on your schedule, your, your one thing, your top 20, 80-20 rule for an agent is role play, lead generate, lead follow up, go on appointments, and negotiate. Those five things. Anything else you can delegate, right? So if I'm answering your call at 930, that's not on those five things. That's not my one thing. That's not my top 20%. I love that's it. 80% stuff that either I can do when I've got the time allotted or I can have an assistant do that. Sure. Right? 
that that's the that's the concept of 80 20 where 20 percent of the work you do will generate what 80 percent of of your, your revenue your commission yeah, of your success so you know focus on the 20 me i might and and I'm 52 years old and I still haven't gotten this. I'll spend my morning organizing my emails. And that is that is the probably the worst thing that I can do to generate business because all I'm doing is self-soothing and I'm not I'm not doing anything from a from a business generation standpoint, but I'm making myself feel good. Uh, and you know, I realized that when you said that, you know, I'll spend maybe 45 minutes going through a number of emails, categorizing things, writing lists down. None of that has to do with gaining new business. So can I, ask, um, can I mention one thing though, interestingly, yeah. because you are so methodical, because you are so detailed and organized, I'm sure you attract a lot of business because that's how you are. And people want an attorney who's like that, as opposed to an attorney who's haphazard, you know, coming sure. from a haphazard person. I want my attorney to be much more organized than I am. So Perhaps that's why you get business because you are so detail oriented. Yeah, it, you know, it, and I appreciate you saying that. It, it's interesting because my partner, uh, my law partner, Phil Rosen, uh, and a lot of can attest to this too. He's very much like you. He he loves he loves selling, and you know the practice of law is kind of an aside. But he loves selling. He loves generating. I won't tell him you said that. <laughs> <laughs> only, only the ether has heard us now. But um, <laughs> you know the, but the but the the key for him is the sales part, and um, you know he will focus his time on just like you said. So his time, he used to tell me when he came in, budgets X number of of hours a day to make phone calls and generate business. That's that's what excites him, you know? So, and, and that's kind of how I'm hearing you set up your day. So we've talked a little bit about the 80, 20 rule. We'll get into a little bit about your scheduling in a second. Um, you had in, in, you know, in our pre-interview, as I like to call it, you had some uh, mentors back in the day and they gave you, one of your first bosses gave you some, some good tips to uh, selling. And what did, what did that boss say to you? Wow. Okay. Um, several. So one of them was, there's so much business out there. I don't know if that's what you're referring to. Yeah. Yeah. So one of my, my ex bosses I used to work for prolific, talk about prolific. This guy sold the toner cartridges to hospitals and things. And he always, he would always say it was his mindset part. So much of his success was the way he saw the world the way he saw the marketplace. There's so much business out there for us to sell these toner cartridges for these HP laser printers. There's law firms, there's accounting firms, there's hospitals, there's schools, there's colleges, so much business out there. And that to me is a, if there's nothing else you take away from this thing, as opposed to, God, it's so hard to get business. Nobody wants to go with us. Nobody wants to pay 6% commission. There's so many agents. There's 50,000. There used to be 10,000. There's no listings. There's no, there, there's no inventory right now. Right. So one is abundance thinking. The other is scarcity thinking. OK. Right? Who do you think is going to do better in business? And you're really trying to create the inventory right now by, you know, you're calling and prospecting. So Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. 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 Uh, and definitely the abundance thinking is going to, uh, you know, come at it from a from a, a better viewpoint, you know, than the scarcity. So that's. I, and I would say one thing, I think we, that whole thing and this whole sales, sales uh, training mindset, we naturally have a lot of negative stuff hitting us all day long, right? Sure. You see it on the media. So it's going to, I think you have to either kind of shut it off to a certain degree, or as my boss, Claudia Restrepo, Keller Williams says, you, she's prolific. She does 400 deals a year in a different city in Washington state while wow. she's here in Miami leading her brokerage. All right. Talk about prolific, but she's yeah. saying you, you got to get you, the top agents in Keller Williams that I know of, they're reading vociferously. They're just reading one book every two weeks, getting, pouring all this positive knowledge into themselves, which is giving them that um, abundance mindset. Because when they're doing that, they can't be listening to the negative stuff that's coming at them every day. It's great advice. Yeah, it's definitely great advice. Um, you had, you touched on a few things. I know you held up a hand and you went through top five things a listing agent should be doing. 
I want you to I want you to recap those again for us. Sure. So from 7:30 to 8 o'clock in the morning, it's role play. So we get on the phone, we're on a Zoom call with somebody, and you just one of you pretends that you're the for sale by owner, the expired, or somebody in your database that you're calling a database call. So one of you pretends to be that person receiving the call. The other person pretends to be the agent who's calling, and you go through a script just to see if you can get the listing appointment. So that's role play from 7.30 to 8. And you switch. That's warm, warming up your engine, huh? Because Absolutely. you're going to get into the actual calls after the role play. So you're warming up. Exactly. Okay. And you're getting feedback, what you did well, what you can improve. So that's 7.30 to 8 a.m. Okay. And so you're practicing with somebody as opposed to practicing on your clients. You're practicing with somebody before, right? You never see an NFL player practicing at actual game time is the idea. Okay. They're practicing before the game. So right. eight o'clock, you're on the phone, you're calling the people, trying to get 20 contacts, 20 conversations per session with a decision maker. That's okay. the idea. And then you lead follow-up from 11 to 11.30, calling people who last week said, hey, call me back next week. I'll have a decision for you next week. I'm not sure yet. Give me a follow-up call. I'm busy. Call me next week. So you're calling all those people. So you have to have a good CRM or an old fashioned, you know, index card box, whatever it takes sure. to make sure you call them when you say, and then you have lunch and then you might have one or two appointments that you schedule that morning. Or if you're really good, maybe a three or four, which I, that to me, that's, that's very hard. Um, and then you get, you meet those people in the afternoon. And then the final piece of those five is negotiating what any, whatever business comes from those, those first four activities. Okay. So you mentioned something really interesting. You're trying to get 20 contacts with 20 decision makers. Yes. Okay. So your, your phone call will be, let's say to a for sale by owner. And the first thing you do when you call a number is what are you asking? Basically, just calling, seeing if they qualify. Can I do the Ford script with you the, the, to somebody in the database? Because I'm doing less and less for sale by owner and expired right now, and more whatever, and more whatever, to the yes. database of people. You know, in my phone, I've got 2,000 people in my phone. I'm sure a lot of us have it. We've had these numbers accumulating over the years. What's just hitting me the last six months with my coach is Jason, you've been in the business two decades. You know a lot of people around here, yet you're not getting as much repeat business as you could. Focus on your database. Your business is your database. Your database is your business. That's what Gary Keller says. That's how he built the biggest company. So sure. focus on the database instead of just churn and burn, right? Right. So, so are you also doing other types of leads, um, you know, Zillow or that sort of thing, or you're just focusing right now on your, your contacts? Focusing on the contacts as well as the FISBOs, the expireds, but focusing on the contacts and there's a Ford script. And the way it goes is, Ring, ring. So you're on my phone. You're on my phone, right? Or my CRM. Okay. Hey, Scott. It's Jason. I, I spoke with Peter Carlos this morning. By the way. Yeah. Did all right. Okay. That was a Ford, it was a Ford call, right? Okay. Hello, uh, Scott. How are you? It's Jason Smith checking in. Have I caught you at a good time? Sure, Jace. What's hey, up? Nothing much. Just wanted to check in, see how you've been doing, Scott. Been good. You know, it's been a tough year, but overall, fine. Doing well. How about yourself? Yeah, it's it's been it's been a tricky navigating this thing. I mean, the real estate business has been very good. Single family homes are super hard to get right now. Very little inventory, so it's a great time to sell from that standpoint. How's work for you? How's your how's your dad doing? Dad's good. Work's been busy. Dogs are good. Yeah, no complaints there. Cool. You got two? You got more than one dog now? I do. I have Zoe and Kiwi. Yeah. Nice. Both rescues. Nice. Yeah. Cool. Are they uh, the ones that jump? I'm forgetting the name. One, one is a, uh, a Chihuahua mix and one is a miniature pincher, Doberman pincher. <laughs> they get along pretty well? Yeah, they do. Awesome, awesome. How's your business been affected by COVID? Um, you know, we've really transitioned well in, into, you know, through, throughout COVID um, because we've learned that we could do what we do from anywhere. We don't need to be sitting in an office per se. Um, maybe our marketing has changed a little bit and how I reach out to people um, because we'll have, we'll do that more through phone and internet instead of meetings, but otherwise we're handling the things through the computer, just like, you know, just, just like we're in the office. 
Nice. Yeah, I've noticed that these Zoom calls are so efficient, you know, instead of getting in a car and driving over here, driving over there, you just saved yourself an hour and a half in travel time. You can have more appointments per day, I'm, I'm discovering through Zoom. Are you absolutely. see the same thing? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So, so what's going on? You called me. Well, just checking in. I simply wanted to check in, um, see what's going on. Question, if I... That's it. I'm just touching base, really. Okay. If there's any way I can help you, um, what kind of clients are you looking for in case I come across any clients that, that will be what you're looking for? Gotcha. Okay. So so you're, you're basically making calls. This is off script now. This is me talking to you. You're basically making calls in from, from individuals or two individuals that are already in your database and you're just saying hello. I'm and, saying, saying yeah. hello. Do, do you do you work in or and ask during that um, phone call or will you will it depend on how the call is going if somebody's rushed or hurried maybe you know you'll absolutely so so Ford is the name of the script Ford script family how's your dad occupation how has COVID affected work recreation i didn't get to i talked a little bit about your family your dogs right in recreation right. and mix um then dreams so what i didn't get to there in that conversation because you're direct right so you said so what's up so right there you're showing me you're a driver time is money you're an attorney right yeah these are billable hours what's on your mind jason right so i've got to adapt from that personality style because not everybody would respond like that so i've got to adapt and 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 cut to the chase Scott, who do you know? Who do you know that I can do some business? Who, who's having a tough time buying a property, such and such? Get right to the chase and come from contribution. It's not just you giving me business. I'm calling you to see who I could give business to you. Yeah. I've yeah. been a realtor for 20 years. I know a lot of people, et cetera. So I could be a value to you, for instance, right? Um, and then dreams. Where do you see your, what's your exit strategy? Once you're done being a lawyer, what would you, what, what's your exit strategy? That's where income properties come into play, right? Okay. Sure. I can maybe show you some income with good cap rates, some duplexes, some multifamilies around town. So that could be part. So organically, you'll get answers there when you get the answers to those questions. Typically, how's the family? Oh, we just split up or, oh, we've got a new, I, I'm just getting married. So that, that's either a downsize scenario where they're going to sell a bigger house, buy a smaller one, or we just, we have a new member of the family coming. Okay. You're going to need a bigger place, going to sell their smaller place and buy a bigger place. Sure. Um, relocation you know how's work oh I'm, i got relocated um or no i just got laid off that could be a sale that could be a move that could, there's so many different things based on life changes you know what i you know what i noticed during that role play is and, and you've you've always been a good listener you did well in in school better than me but um you you're listening very well because as soon as i mentioned dogs plural you said oh you you have two dogs or you have more than one dog and you you stopped for a moment and you expanded on the dogs. Your thought process was not on your next question. You were listening to my answer and then you were responding in kind. And I think that's very important in sales. I mean, I know it is, right? Because you want to, somebody, I have, I've literally been in conversations with people who have asked me how I'm doing and I said, eh, yeah mom just passed and uh that's, that's great so um you know like whoa they were they were moving on in the script in their mind and they didn't even think about the answer they were so eager to get to the next point so um yeah and that could be very embarrassing but with you know a testament to you is you're listening and that's the key is you're picking up on things because divorce or or, or death or, or things that come up in people's lives, you know, as, as tough as it might sound, there, there are opportunities there for us, right? So, you know, divorce, well, there's a split up, somebody's moving, somebody's selling. So mm -hmm. you'll find your way, you'll navigate during a call to find your way, um, having done this thousands of times, right? And, um, you know, end up in a possible situation where, you know who you could call? You could call so-and-so, right? So, yeah. And Jason, just to recap, um, I'm sure most people on the call know what the Ford model is, but um, in case anyone is brand new out there, um, could you just go over what the letters stand for? Sure. And it's the easiest script to remember. That's why I don't have to worry about, oh, what's my next question? Because it's so simple, this script, Alana. 
family. How's the family? Question mark. Zip it. Let them talk. How's work? How's COVID treating you? It's like a natural thing. How you know, and, and then you get right into it. It's very fascinating to see how how they've pivoted. Recreation. What are you doing for fun to keep saying these days during COVID? You know, well, I'm biking, I'm paddleboarding, I'm running, whatever, walking the dog, going to the beach. Dreams. So let me ask you, where's the first place you'll travel to once the, you know, once we're able to freely move around the country again, where, what's the first place you're going to go to, you know, when you travel? And that's a nice conversation right there. And maybe that becomes a, a vacation, maybe a timeshare or a vacation, uh, <laughs> second place in Colorado that they might want to buy, you know, sure. and refer them to a, an agent over in Colorado. That's another possibility. Your kids just went to college. So now they got too much house. They need something smaller condo. We hear that one a lot. Okay, so that's, that's terrific. So that gives our audience the acronym FORD, and it walks them through a, a very simple um, script to keep in their head. If they ever get lost up, think of FORD and, and plug in the, um, the letter that, meet, that, that builds the acronym. <clears throat> so we talked about 80-20. We talked about the five responsibilities of listing. Um, your ideal schedule you touched on with role playing, then actual calling, then follow ups, and you know appointment setting. Um, you're you've got some lessons that you wish you had learned 20 years ago, right? I mean, that's uh, are there things that that you've been doing this? You've had thousands of these calls. Are there things that you could tell the newer people out there? Let them learn from your mistakes. So. Tell, tell us. So uh, get a transaction coordinator okay. early and in terms when you get under contract, right? Your 80-20 as an agent isn't shepherding this deal to the goal line. There are people that can do it much better than I can, for instance, for $350 that would interact with Scott and with Becker to get the deal closed, right? That are more detail oriented than I perhaps. Even if you are very detail oriented, is that the best use of your time? Is that your top 20% that's going to give you 80% of your commissions doing that stuff? So my service would have been much better early on before they, they don't they didn't even have transaction coordinators uh, right. back in the day. That's like a new thing, a new industry that I, but since I discovered that it's made my service go way up because I don't have to worry about that. They're in better hands than if they were with me while I'm trying to gain business like your partner. Sure. Um, but I'd say that one, number two, have a database, build a database. Like all these people, these 600 people I mentioned, many of them I'm just out of touch with. They wouldn't know who I am if I called these days. So right. I really having a CRM that you're tagging, buyer, seller, investor, really tagging that database. What's the name of their pets? Do they have two dogs? You know, were they both rescues like Scott had, right? So that's stuff I can put in my database after this call so that it's in the notes section. So again, you're with Zillow and all these other tech platforms coming after this industry, because there's so many billions of dollars at stake. The only moat that we as agents have around our business is the relationships that we have with our database. Because if we don't solidify those relationships, tech's gonna take them, right? So that's, that's really what it's all about. You know, that's a really, really great point, Jace. Um, what, so CRM, for those that don't know, Client Relationship Manager, right, or, or Management Program, what, what program are you using? Keller Williams has one called KW Command that they rolled out. It's like an all-in-one platform. And because I hadn't used one before, I just started using this. And it's, it's been super helpful to me because it's all in one place. And just start, you know, the first thing is you take all the contacts from your phone and you put them into the CRM. That's step number one. And then you just build from there. Who are who are buyers? Who are sellers? Who's a customer? Who's your VIP list that's giving you referrals, right? So you, you got to grade them as, as like how many. With us, it's, I'm not sure it's the best way, but there's the community. There's just the, the general 2,800 people from my phone. Sure. Then there's uh, customer, there's nurture, someone who said they're going to buy or sell within a year. Then there is VIP. They've given us business in the past. So those are some of the ones that we have. You're, you, you mentioned something in our pre-notes about a quarterly call smart plan script. What, what, is, mm -hmm. what is the quarterly call smart plan? 
That's what we, you and I just went over. Okay, so, yeah. so that's that's what we did. Got it. Um, the key, Scott, the key is not just to do it once and not do it for another 10 months. It's to do it systematically every quarter, every three months. It's okay. in your CRM that they come up, pop up on your screen. Okay, I spoke with Scott three months ago. So I'm going to leave right off from when you and I just spoke. So how, how are the dogs doing? You know, how right. is Loverman Pincher, you know? Yeah. Start with that. Go forward script, you know, go from there. But it's got to be systematic. And that's when the relationship gets built. I'm finding only doing this six months now, switching over from Fisbo expired, where it's churn and burn, which is still yeah. good because there's business. But really, I've got in my database of 2,800 people, I've got like eight or 900 people who know who I am that will have a conversation with me when I call. So my goal is to really service those eight to 900 people. Whatever happens, I want to focus on those eight to 900 and serve them. And a byproduct I'm, I'm hoping is going to be a lot of business. And I can tell you, there's someone that you and I both know that we went to school with. I've been calling him every three months or so for about four, maybe he's, he's been about two or three years. He had his mom list a $2.3 million property with, uh, with me four or five months ago, and it just closed two weeks ago. That Bravo. was a call. Yeah. Really? A That's fantastic. And yeah. that, that was a product of you focusing. So you, you know, and I like this because those out there that are listening and think they have to maybe do things the hard way, like you did, um, calling for sale by owners and getting a lot of rejections. You're now focusing on people you know, calling those people, and just keeping your relationships established and letting them know what you're doing, finding out what they're doing, and taking it from there. And um, so are you still looking for those, those rejection calls? Because, you know, or, or is that more of a for sale by owner platform where you get rejected, get rejected, and then boom, you get one. Yes. I'm not really looking to get re rejected. And that's the hard part about calling your database because you don't want someone that you know to just hang up on you. Sure. Or you right. to call you later. If I had commission breath, when I'm making these calls, I might get that response. But if they can feel that that's not my intention behind the call here, I'm checking in. It's been a hard year for all of us, right? If they can sense that I'm not, I don't have an agenda whatever happens from this call is going to happen, right? But at the very least, I'm going to be listening and I'm going to see if I can help you in one way or another, you know? Gotcha. Uh, but yeah, the less, you're less, but that's the problem with calling the, my, my drunk monkey around calling the people in my cell phone is that I don't want to sound salesy. I don't want to, I don't want to be rejected. I'd rather be rejected by a FISBO expired that I don't know. Sure. So that's my thought for two decades. Yeah. My coach in real estate is telling me, no, Jason, you've got, you've got such a database. You've got to go after your database. And okay. to, to expand on this one thing, so this person that just listed a $2.35 million property with us, they've been with two other realtors, some of the best agents in town, and it expired with them. And on my quarterly call with this person, he said, Jason, what, what, what area do you focus on in real estate? I know you're sending me commercial deals once in a while, but what's your, what's your, your, your wheelhouse? I said, pretty much residential, Coconut Grove, Coral Gables. You can, my mom's had a property. She's had it with two agents now for about two years. Can you come and take a look at this house this coming Tuesday? She's, she's vacationing right now. But I'd love to get your opinion on it. And that was the listing that we took and sold. Okay. And let me follow up on that. What did you do differently, okay, than the other two agents? Uh, you, you walked in, I'm sure there was some honesty and some, and some, some creative pricing, you know, we're going to sell this house. It's going to go at this. How did, how did you, how did you do something different and get the house sold? Okay. Great question. Um, it had been, it was dark. It was, it was a 6,000 square foot townhouse with an elevator, rooftop terrace, views of the water, views of the sailboat bay in coconut grove, beautiful property. It's called, called the cloisters. Okay. Basically, right across from green streets there. So it was very dark. There were some lights that were missing, you know, some bulbs that were out. The, the uh, skylights were 10 years old. So they no longer, they were all crusted. No light was coming through. So that's the first impression you walk in, people like light and bright. This was not light and bright. Um, number two, it was vacant, no furniture there whatsoever. So I had a stager come in and she basically, 
she knows how to sell her services. So I said to my seller, would you be open to having a stager come in and just see, see if she get her thoughts on the process? That's something new for me. I've never gone with stagers because my, my mind, I'm thinking, oh gosh, they're already paying a 6% commission. Now I want this seller to pay 10 to $20,000 in staging. Sure, I couldn't sure. get myself around that idea, but I knew this house needed it. So I reached out to this lady. She's well known for staging. She, myself and the seller met in the living room and she just did her pitch. She talked about people being visually, the, the buyers these days, Mrs. Seller, they're visually lazy. They can't really imagine how it will look, right? That's, she has these terms that we all have in our industries. Her, one of hers was visually lazy, right? Yeah. Yeah. Like, wow, that's interesting. Visually, visually. <laughs> <laughs> and so she gave her three packages. You got this package, this package, or this package, every room in the house, including the rooftop terrace. And she basically, the, the seller went with the, the rooftop terrace, the, the whole package. The whole package. So for three months, which was a pittance. It was thousands and thousands of dollars. But at the end of the day, it got this property sold, you know? Fantastic. Fantastic. And, and, you know, when you price a property, you know, look, you're not, you're not in the business to take on inventory, you know, and keep inventory. You're in the process to sell homes. So when you take on a listing and you find that sweet spot of price, you, you don't want to sell too low, you know, because then sellers will be upset. We gave it away. You don't want to price it too high. I know the market will somewhat dictate what it sells for, but Pricing is, is a key component. How do you develop your pricing skills? What do you, what do, you do in analytics? Is that, is that something that um, you're really good at? I'm getting better at it. I think uh, you basically, Trend Graphics is a really good program. Trend Graphics. Trend is Graphics, program. okay. Trend Graphics tells you if it's a buyer's or a seller's market. So you basically plug in the zip code. You plug in, if it's a single family condo, what price, what, um, price range you're looking at and based on what you plug in it'll tell you if it's a buyer advantage or seller advantage we all know that single family under 500 there's like one to two months of inventory in miami right now so you know it's a screaming seller's market right now where prices have been going up mm -hmm. so you can err on the side of going too high in that type of environment because the market's kind of coming up to meet whatever your high price is uh, yeah. versus condo, which might be, we've been at 12 months of inventory, which is the buyer's market, but it's now come to nine months of inventory, meaning it would take nine months to sell every condo if no other condos came on the market. Wow, yeah. Really, the first thing you have to know is figure out buyers or sellers in the market, what you're dealing with. And then I don't like to look so much at closed sales because that's looking at the rear view mirror. Appraisers will look at that when they're giving financing, but that's not market value. In my mind, market value is what a buyer is willing to pay today, given this scenario that we're in that's market value okay closed sales don't tell you that that's rear view mirror stuff that's the past you know so i like to look at where are you positioned versus the competition today versus what sold six months ago so what's other so, listings versus other listings. listings yes other active listing available listings the available competing listing beautiful beautiful that see this is this is gold because I did not know that, you know, I'm thinking like an appraiser, the driver of value is what sold, but I like, I like what you're saying because that is rear view stuff. That's, those are good buzzwords. Um, <laughs> no, that's, I don't know uh, whether or not you, you had the ability to share your client relationship management software screen or, or is that not, um, yeah. yeah, you want to share yeah. it? Yeah. Okay. Try sharing. I think, uh, do you have the share screen button? I have it right here. I'll try it. Let's see here. So this is KW command. Can you see it? Yes. Yes. KW command. So here it tells you. So it's all in one platform. Here's the contact. Basically. So you can see there's about on the upper right hand corner here while it loads, there's about 2,900 contacts in there, 2,891. Sure. And then you tag them. So this guy was a Toastmaster right here. Or sorry, Abby was a Toastmaster, Keller Williams agent, um, referral partner in Oklahoma City, N for nurture. Uh, this person's a builder. This person's VIP. He's done several deals with me. Um, let's see here. Past client. This person's an agent here in town. Uh, commercial agent. 
very organized and very simplified, huh? It's, it's not complicated. It's just, it's, it's helping you mine your data. Absolutely. And that's been a challenge for me. My mind doesn't do that naturally, but to have all of a sudden this platform that's there for me, I don't have to figure out where do I get this? Where do I get that? Where do I get that? To me, that's not my skill set. So here it's given to me. I just have to execute on it. So this is the critical piece. So basically task to do, I've got 196 people. I've got to call or text. And this is my accountability partner. Like I've got to send an email to this person. I've got to do my quarterly call with her. A uh, phone call with Abe. So it's telling me what I have to do. And I just check them off as I go down the list. Beautiful. My goal is to get from 196 to zero. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I shouldn't have this many right now. So I haven't been executing properly. So sure. this is my accountability partner, this program. I should Got have it. 10 to 15 a day that I, I can easily handle 10 to 15 a day. Right. And then here you've got smart plans. You've got 5,000 different smart plans uh, set up. You know, there's the 555 database touch, new Facebook buyer lead, monthly call, eight, eight touches in, in eight weeks for someone you've just met, the home anniversary, open house follow-up, birthdays. So it's all there. And there's all, all of those are different, you know, different ways to interact with, with people, either, you know, a Facebook buyer or, you know, a monthly call buyer or, or seller or, you know, all of those are different ways, right? Exactly. I mean, you've got different languages here, depending on, I'm not even sure what language that is. I mean, there's 5,000 different plans that different agents have put in there that works for them. They share it here. Mm -hmm. um, and, you, and you see there's how many people are using it. One person's using that. 4,100 agents in the Keller Williams system are using this one. Um, yeah, so that's, that's great. I'm trying to keep it simple. For me, it's quarterly call. That's a must. Okay. Eight by eight, using that. You, so you just met somebody, you got their business card. Now to solidify that relationship, you want to talk to them, email them, text them, whatever, give them something of value once a week for eight weeks. At the end of that eight weeks, you've now solidified more of a relationship with them by doing that. It's all systematic. And that's what this allows you to do. I, I see that. Yeah, I, I see that. And, and that's why, and, and you're... You're very real ritualistic in your practice the, the, you know, it's not for, and, and this is something that, you know, you picked up on early on. And like I said, I could not reach you between certain hours, but you were doing what you needed to do. You were doing the 20%. Mm -hmm. And, and that was, that was such a key. So I think for our audience out there, you know, the, some of the, some of the takeaways are, you know, one of the big takeaways for, for me at least is, is your, how you schedule your day and that 20% of what you do is going to net you the 80% of the return that you want. The other 80% that you do is, is, you know, stuff to make Scott feel good because I organized my emails, but it's not going to yield those results like you. So I think that's, I think that's key. I know that you happen to be looking for a couple good people for your, uh, for, to, to join you in your business. What are you looking for? Well, I'm looking for, thank you very much for the, for allowing me to express this. Sure. Sure. I'm, I'm looking for an executive assistant to be the admin where their top 20% will be helping to build our database and doing admin, not selling, but sure. admin while I go out there and sell. I'm also looking for somebody uh, to show our listings. So for me to teach how you do the calls and to get Zoom appointments and in-person appointments, that would be the first three months. And after they graduate from that, they will be showing our listings um, that we have it's when a realtor comes to show their buyer the property and they'll get a piece of the, the commission. And then they'll gravitate into the buyer's agent for our team doing the open houses on the listings that we have. So, so yeah. Thank Those you. are great opportunities. And, and how can, how can people reach you, Jace? A cell phone would be the best. I mean, first of all, I'd love it if you guys could follow me on uh, Instagram at, at showcase Miami is our Instagram handle at showcase okay. Miami. Sure. Word. And my cell phone is 786-326-8115. Call or text me. That's the best way to reach me. I'm going on Instagram right now at showcase. Miami. There you are. All right. Mm -hmm. And I am following you because I'm, I'm, following I'm, you not, 
Yeah, I'm not a big Instagram guy, but um, I'm looking at it now and I'm following you. You've got 2,163 followers. You're following 5,300. You've got 1,500 posts. Or your posts are a lot about your listings, right? You're, you'll, you'll put a listing on, you'll show the home, you'll do a virtual tour. Yeah, we do a lot of that. We're still trying to figure out the social media piece. That's not one of, that, that's uh, working on that piece of it. So ideally the executive assistant that, you know, that I, that I hire, they've got some social media skills as well that they okay. can build our followers. So we anybody to, else? Go ahead, Alana. Go we ahead. Had, we had a question um, from the audience uh, regarding um more CRM oriented. It says, do you send correspondence besides phone calls to your database? Great question. Great question. We do email blasts every Friday at 11 a.m. announcing our uh, listings just sold or the open houses that weekend. That's an opportunity for us to improve as we tag different people. Like say we tag investor, we could send those people deal of the week, you know, 10% cap rate or off market opportunity, whatever it might be. You got to be kind of tricky with the off market these days. So you got to watch out for that. But for investors or for people that are in the Grove versus the Gables versus Kendall, you can really target um, based on what, what, how you've identified them in there. And that's what continuing. I think that's, I think that's really important not to just blast everyone with the same email and to really target exactly what you're sending to, to who. So you, you're able to do that through your CRM? We're able, if, if we focus on it properly and we spend the time tagging them properly, yes. If, yeah, so you gotta set up your CRM properly because garbage in is garbage out and you, you, have, to, you have to set it up correctly so it functions correctly for you, right? That's, yeah. that's exactly true, yeah. yes. Yeah, and that's, look, that's why you need somebody that's, kind of dedicated to that because you know you're you want to focus elsewhere but it is an important component we we deal with that in the law firm too you know i i my assistant is putting we have interaction which it's called and um you know she'll put the contacts in interaction and load them and you know sometimes there'll be there'll be errors in in the contact information sometimes things will need to be changed sometimes things will expire so when we send out data you know, it has, it has to be accurate because if we're pushing it out to expired info, it's, you know, it's only as good as the info in. For so, sure. um, that Jason, you know, one thing that I really appreciated throughout this, uh, session was your candor, your, your honesty in saying that, you know, these are things you're trying now. You've been at this 20 years, you're extremely successful and you're trying new things. I find that to be a beautiful thing. And, and, you know, it gives, it gives others courage that are just starting out that they're not behind the eight ball. They just have to develop a plan and work the plan. And some of the things you taught us today about your daily schedule model and that 20% of time are critical and important and calling those people in your database and, calendaring the next call for three months from now so that you can continue to, to follow up. So these are great points. We really enjoyed having you as a guest. Alana, anything going out for, for Jace? Um, I, I liked your, your positivity also that you're, um, you know, especially in, in a market where you, you're focused on listings and, you know, there's short inventory, there's no inventory out there. Um, you're just drowning out uh, that noise and uh, putting positive energy out there and, and creating the inventory for yourself. Um, I thought that was really great. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, really well done, Jace. So um, we'll, we'll definitely be sending out the link to, you know, all of these are taped. We'll send the link out to you. You can post on your social media as well. Thank you so much for being our guest and thank you so much for imparting your wisdom. Thank you so much, Scott. I appreciate it. Alana, Laura, thanks for setting this up. I'm going to take a quick picture of this screenshot right here so I can put it on my social media. Okay. <laughs> thank you guys. Thank you so much. I enjoyed it. This is, you got a great platform here. This is really cool. Thanks. Bye-bye. Bye guys. Bye.